And originally, the dynamic suspension for the brand was best known in racing circles, um, circuit racing and some uh, world rally car stuff as well. But the spool valve technology, we transferred over from making shoe valve dampers about uh, probably 10 years ago, maybe a bit longer than that, in the racing world. And our first actual road application of the spool valve technology was the C28 Camaro, the last generation C28 Camaro. And then GM approached us about the truck application, so we um, put our heads together and with GM and decided on the best architecture for the damper. And the actual valve inside it is uh, what the, the difference between a typical shim valve and these is it's a uh, hydraulic spool valve. So we have a coil spring inside this um, tube and shaped windows in the side and a we call it the shuttle inside and move and expose the window to allow oil to flow from the inside through the window and escape. And by shaping the window and changing some various other components, the spring rate and things, we have very, very precise control over the shape of the force velocity curve. And being able to do different things with the force velocity curve that, that, than what you can do with a shin valve really, really allows you to tune the performance of the vehicle very, very precisely. So these two valves, I can show you, we have, there's actually three in total in the damper, and we have a cutaway, or a plastic transparent damper here. So that's uh, just a plastic version of that guy. And the two main spool valves, one for rebound and one for compression, sit in the central chamber. The, the outer chamber is just the gas reservoir. Um, it happens to be a, you know, incorporated all in one piece, but that could be a remote reservoir, but it's all attached in this one. So we've got the two, two in the valve body, and when the piston is in the normal range, you see these holes in the inner tube, when the piston is between the cover and the, the holes in the inner tube, the oil, all the oil is pumped through the main valves. So in compression, it, the oil below the piston is pumped down the tube, it comes out through these holes in the inner tube, and then makes its way between the two tubes, then out into the compression valve, up through the compression valve, and then recirculates in through the top of the damper. You see the forts up here. In rebound, it does the opposite. It's pulled, the oil is pulled by the piston, pulls it out the top, goes down the outside of the damper, in through the rebound valve, then recirculates into the bottom to, to recoup underneath the piston. Once the piston passes these holes, so you can actually you can see this at some point, the, see the piston goes past those holes, I don't know if you can see that, but the piston's passing it. And once the piston passes those holes, the oil is trapped between the piston and the bottom of the tube. And the only way, place for it to go is back through the piston. So there's a third independent spool valve inside the piston itself that controls the compression forces towards the end of stroke. So that valve is a lot stiffer than the main valve. So as you approach end of stroke in a big off-road event, it absorbs a lot of energy in the last third of the stroke of the damper. So that's the position sensitive bit of it, the PSD as it's been, as we call it. So this technology basically is a readover from circuit racing ultimately, but the flexibility of the tuning really allows you to apply it to any vehicle you want and get a really good result. So that, this is a, that would be a Formula One version of the same thing. So it's a, actually a very similar architecture hydraulically, um, but obviously on a vastly different scale and at a vastly different cost. But it's the same, exactly the same concept, the valves with the shaped windows and the coil spring is in the race dampers as is in these and the Z28 Camaro. But this is the only one that has the position sensitive um, portion of the architecture. So that's it. Oh, the second, secondary benefit of it basically pumping the oil around the damper, or around the outside of the damper between the two tubes, is the working fluid is always being moved past the outer surface of the damper, which is aluminum. So it's really good for heat transfer and really good for keeping the damper cool. Here that say we're adapting the spool valve technology that was successful in other road cars, including the Camaro Z28 where we have unique school valves for compression and rebound.
And we're taking those valves, the exact same valves, and we're applying them to an application for off-road. That gave us, moving them off the piston gave us more travel for the available space. Also allowed us a chance to add a third valve, a third spool valve, on the piston. So the damper could help the vehicle you know, respond to what it would experience off-road. So that could be tuned just to handle those loads separately from the on-road driving, driving range valves. That way the damping is unique in the different ranges of position of travel of the damper. So taking the spool valve technology from the Camaro and applying it to the ZR2. And how it works is when you're driving on the road, the piston is moving up and down in the middle of the damper. So it doesn't get to the extremes. You know, like when you compress the damper over bumps, the piston gets pushed all the way to the bottom of the damper. Our architecture allows the damping characteristic when the piston gets down here to be different, tuned, and optimized just for that region, separately from driving on the road. So the oil flows inside this range, out these transfer ports, through the angular space, across the bridge, and through the valves. And then in rebound, it's going the opposite direction. It's coming up the inside tube, and out between the two tubes, and back to the valves, the rebound valve. But when you hit a bump, the piston goes past those transfer ports. There's nowhere for the oil to go. So it would be hydraulically locked, except that we added that third spool valve on the piston, which becomes active under the forces past the port transfer ports. And then it's tuned, optimized, just to manage the loads of the huge challenge effect you get from a landing or hitting a large bump. So the spool valve inside here is, is tuned just for that, differently from the road spool valves. And the road spool valves are tuned, optimized just for road driving, and there's no compromise in them when you drive on the road for the vehicle to be able to do the off-road events. Also, when it's fully extended, when the vehicle gets close to being airborne, it becomes airborne, you don't want your wheel to come, go slamming down in the full extension. So there's this... <clears throat> Another little piston that goes in a hydraulic cup, which creates rebound damping force. It allows it to manage the energy so the wheel isn't smacked against the end of the travel. It's a soft uh, transition to the end of travel. So each operating range, road driving range, compression range, rebound range, are optimized with the force velocity characteristic uniquely for that region without compromise to the others.